Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you for hanging out, man. This is our sixth episode of Willie Barcenas Dropping. I'm excited. I have a cat uh, who is multi-talented. Uh, let me tell you about him. He's, he, he started out as a rapper, and I believe uh, he got into comedy from rapping, and he has a different style of rapping all the way from Houston, man. Yeah. I got Chingo Bling. What's up, what's up? What's, what's up, up, brother? Hey, man, cheers. Hey, what's cheers, the game, brother? cheers, brother. Cheers, cheers, man. Huge honor to be right here on the drop-in. Uh, just got off stage, but... You were just at the Brea Improv. Yeah, and dude, my, my set that I'm working on for 2024, I'm talking a lot about, you know, how I got into show business, okay. you know, which was like about 20 years ago. Right. Um and the approach I took with music was definitely comedic. And uh, I, I sprinkled a lot of Spanish stuff. I was just trying to figure it out. Right. So, you know, I, I'm just I'm just so grateful for, like, stand-up because it just feels like a second chance. You know, I got so burnt out. I got so you burnt, got burnt out, out on what? with on, the music. On, yeah. on the music? I just got uh, really tell me, burnt Tell out. me a little bit about your music, bro. Tell me about a little bit about your style. We're going we're gonna to play some of your... Some some of the uh, some of your music, you know, so so the audience for those yeah. that 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 don't know your style, man, tell us a little bit yeah. about it. Well, some some of my biggest stuff that got known uh -huh. was uh, were parodies, so just you know changing the lyrics and. Uh, were, were you were, okay? Were you like a uh, maybe a rapper Latino Weird Al Yankovic? Some some people were you influenced me. by him? I, I liked him. It, it, he wasn't like my main like my main reference at all, but. I could say he was an influence. You know, I, I respected what he did. Okay. I, I really liked uh what was it? Uh he remade Beat It. Was it Eat It? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He did Eat It yeah, and stuff it, like that. Yeah. So yeah, as a kid, he was dope. Uh and, and I really got a kick out of some of the um some of the rap dudes that, that had like big personas, like even like Flavor Flav. Okay. And yeah. When uh yeah, well, that was over the top persona when, for sure. When Andre three thousand started wearing like wigs and and shoulder pads and random stuff i was okay. like okay this is really blurring the lines it's just yeah. really like kicking the doors down as to like what's allowed so i i know you you kind of you know your 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 style of dressing man it was different style right you you had stuff that's not supposed to go together <laughs> want to talk a little bit about that man yeah I, I really trip people out when uh when i hit the scene everything was baggy at that time it okay. was like it was like mid 2000s like the little John crunk era. So everything was really oversized. Um, I mean, I might have been a little bit heavier back then, but I was still wearing like double legs, tall. Okay. And I was wearing shorts with the boots and the Nike swoosh and j just really trying to stand out. Right, right. And make a name for myself because it was either that or get a real job. Right. So I was like, man, I got to try and act a fool and make this, something happen. So you... So you 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 knew from the get go that you weren't you weren't gonna be a a serious rapper like a guy that like had a deep message and you just you just wanted no. to make people laugh would, would yeah. you entertain people with your rapping would you say I honest, honestly I was selling CDs at the flea market and I was DJing at the time okay. so I believe that my my more like DJ mixes that had more of the hits and like some remixes and like more mainstream stuff yeah. I assumed that that was gonna pay my rent, and my chingo bling experiment on the side would pay like my cell phone. I just thought the chingo bling thing was gonna be like a flash in the pan, like I'm just gonna try it for six months and. But it I, took off, right? It, it, well, talk it, about it, a little bit about the height of, of the of the of your your rap career, bro. What what would you say was 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 a high point? Dude, okay, this could be a high point and a low point. Okay. Only because uh, P. Diddy's been in the news a lot lately. Okay. But uh, there was a time where I was, like, negotiating with him. Like, the P. Diddy? Like, yeah, like, he had a contract did, and everything. Did he take you shopping? <laughs> somebody, somebody yelled that in the crowd tonight. Somebody yeah. yelled that. They said, did he take you shopping? So, okay, that's going to have to be a tag. Like, he did not take me shopping. <laughs> But no, that that was pretty surreal, bro. Because so like, where did you meet P Diddy? Did, okay. did you go to his office? Or <laughs> okay. how did you? How, what was the you, whole connection? He wants to know if I woke up. Because you're a handsome man, bro. He wants to know. He wants to know if I woke up with barbecue sauce on my titties. That's okay. what he's trying okay. to say. Okay, so what happened? <laughs> nah, so so my buddy Pitbull, Pitbull. So wait a minute. When you say buddy, no, nah, is, is he like a homie? homie yeah, as a homie because we go way back when like we were broke. 
So he was like passing out mixtapes. Like this is Pitbull before but, before he was Mr. Worldwide. So, so I thought Pitbull was from Miami. He's bro. from Miami. Oh, so how did you hook up with them? Because you're from Houston. Yeah, I'm from Houston. Because yeah. people usually when they're starving together as uh, as artists, well, I'm they're starving the, on the road. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, yeah, they're starving yeah. in the same city. Yeah. So how did you how did you end up uh, with Pitbull? Like him starving, you starving. Well, mm -hmm. you took the Greyhound over there, bro, or what? We and, took and my, we took my suburban. We took my suburban to Florida. He he saw me on the beach with with we were me and my rap, uh rapper buddies from uh, Texas. Me and my boy Fade Dog and my crew. Okay. We were down there in Miami. I re I think we were just doing promotion. Like we were going to different cities and just talking to record stores. But I had all my crazy outfit, my boots and my hat and everything. And uh, and where were you rapping at when you, when you when you're like I know as a comic when you're starving as a comic yeah, the man, venues. You, you know, you do like gigs with ten people in. They're them. like hell gigs, yeah. Hell that, gigs, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was like it was like clubs and like big bars. Okay. So so Pitbull happened to see me, but yeah. but we met later. I think that evening at, at a nightclub, where um, he 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 was already getting some buzz. He oh. he was always like an upperclassman. He was always like a couple years ahead. Like right. already had a record deal and right. had way more experience. And um, so we met him at the club, and we just got to talking. He was like, bro, you have a very, like, a distinct look. He's this like, Pitbull. Yeah. Pitbull okay. told me, like, yo, this is like, he's like, you remind me of Little John because you got, like, this brand. Okay. He's like, I'm never, he's like, people, once they see you, they're not going to forget this with this right. crazy Mexican look. Right. And, uh, and I was like, well, yo, so let's work. So basically, he hosted a mixtape that we put out, which is basically like he sent some raps, we put some of our raps, and and he said some things like, "Yo, you know, Mister, it's, it's your boy Pitbull out here with Chingo Bling, we're connected," type of thing, like right. little drops. Right. And we put we put it together, but that was the beginning of a of a friendship where, you know, he's like, "Yo, I'm walk I'm walking this red carpet for MTV," but he right. was up and coming. He's like, "Yo, join me." Or he's like, yo, I'm gonna do this thing at uh, in LA. I'm going on TV. Like it might have been LA TV. Okay. He's like, yo, be my hype man. Like be in the background. Right, right. So he was always very generous, and um, he set up a few potential record deals. One okay. of which was the P Diddy thing. So he calls me one day, and he says, hey, if anybody asks, Little John wants to sign you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh shit, Little John wants to sign me. He's like, no. That's what I told P. Diddy. So in case anybody asks, <laughs> okay. this is the lie. So you told P. Diddy that little... He told P. Diddy that. Oh, so okay. he, he lied to P. Diddy and was like, hey, dude, if you don't want to sign this kid from Houston, yeah. he, I'm telling you, like, he's up and coming. If you don't want to sign him, Little John wants to sign him. And I, I just felt like a used El Camino at this okay. point. Like, he, right. He's trying to hype me up. Right. So I don't hear anything for weeks. And maybe like a month or two later, P. Diddy's in town. He's like, yo... Uh, we're doing this white party. We're all white. Who you know, said this? P. Diddy. And I'm just like, uh -oh. at this time, this is before all the allegations, <laughs> right? right? This is this is the different P. Diddy, you know, that that we need that we know now. Right. So so uh, I'm like, okay, all right. So he was at a uh, hotel, Derek, this big old suite, like H. P. D. in the hallway, assistants and managers, and me and my crew were there. So nothing happened, Willie, because Willie's no, trying no, to figure no, out. No, 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 bro, Did I'm you not... watch your drink the entire time? Bro. <laughs> I'm kidding. Bro. This is part of my set. No, no, I'm, okay. I'm working the material. Okay. All right. All right. But no, long story short, bro, it, it was very. I was very starstruck. I'm not gonna lie, because. Oh yeah, bro. Because that uh, my high school era, like that was the soundtrack to my high school, and um, I didn't have the shiny suit, nothing. But it was like, yo, I, I see this dude on TV, and like. We're sitting here on the couch and I'm and, and watching TV and I'm just like, so what's next for Bad Boy Records, you know? And he's telling me and I'm like, this is surreal. So we go and we go to the party and all the people in, in town from the radio station, they see me walking in with this dude and they're just like, damn, Chingo Bling's making some moves. However, I had to stick to my guns in terms of what I was trying to get out of, you know, the business and my career. And... It was it was it was a hard choice because it's like either a you get in the game mm -hmm. and you can learn so much you could be under someone who's like a mogul, um, or b you try to trail your own bla you know blaze your own trail right, right, right. and try to do your own thing. So I, I had to go my own route. Okay, 
What 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 advice that because uh, obviously you know everybody knows uh, Pitbull is ex- extremely Very successful smart. at his craft, and then and then when you see his uh, when you see him on social media, he's always you know giving uh, powerful really advice. good powerful, powerful yeah wisdom. Advice. You yes, know? He's, absolutely. Like, he's breaking down uh, life, man, big time. And so bro. what I mean, you you able to you were able to you know be one on one with him, man, mm-hmm. when when you. Uh, you know, when you had that opportunity with him, yeah. what was like something that stuck out with you, man? I mean, j- just the fact that you're able to discern the level of wisdom. You know, I, I believe he's younger than me, if I'm not mistaken. But from the very beginning, mm-hmm. I just noticed like how disciplined and like he would like say we're going to uh, he's going to go buy some suits for an event and we're, we're riding to the mall and he starts to pump gas. He takes his receipt, he opens the glove compartment, he opens this envelope, he jots down a thing, he puts the receipt in the thing. And I'm just like, bro, I throw away receipts. Like, so, what are you doing? So this is for his taxes. Taxes. And I was okay. just like, wow, he's very meticulous. Uh-huh. And, you know, he would um, he, he would lend me advice. He'd sometimes, he'd see me with some new jewelry or something. He'd yeah. be like, that's a nice down payment. You could have got some property with that or something. Okay. I'm just like, okay, okay he's, all right, well, yeah, you know, right, but also right. I want to floss. Right. Or, or sometimes he'd be like, hey, bro, listen, I, I know you guys in Texas, y'all got like this this, this Tex-Mex thing going, but there's a whole other world out there. I think your there. cash app just went up. Yeah, something. <laughs> but basically, he, he was trying to school me about the international game and like, uh, like putting more Spanish in your stuff. And hey, bro, there's other countries out there. And okay. You know what? I'll, this is one thing I just remembered. When he first started going international... He was like, hey, you're really good at merchandising. I, I want you to work my merch. Why did he say I'm, you're good at merchandising? Because he saw that I had like bobbleheads and I just I was I had like a lot of um, merchandise. interesting yeah, yeah. different stuff, right? right? I was trying to be creative. So he's like, yo, we're going to Europe. Mm-hmm. We're we're hitting the European tour. Like they're bubbling, they're okay. going overseas. I want you to, you know, roll with us and and do the merch. Okay. And dude, this was such a hard decision. But like at the time, I had a baby on the way. And I was like, "This is my boy. I'm proud of." So him. you had to step back from you being an artist. Yeah, I was to like being the guy that's handling like, merchandise. Am I gonna do that? Do I uh, say yes? Nah, that's fucked. Up. Hey, John, that's fucked up, bro. He said he's taking. <laughs> that's, that's a tough. My, that's my merchandise guy, bro. That's no, my brother. I mean, he, he said big, he took a step back. <laughs> no, it's a big opportunity. Yeah. And sometimes you, you look back at these at these. Uh, you could have gone left and right, and it's like, dude, what could have touring Europe with Pitbull on the come up? Like, what? Could, what so I could have learned so, so much. So you didn't do it. No, I was like, dude, I have to what, like respectfully decline. Was it okay? Now, do you feel looking back, man? You know, me, okay. If I was in that situation, I was in that situation, but I, I, I most likely would have turned it down too, because I would have said, no, oh, man, I don't handle merch. I'm an artist. Yeah. Is that was that your? I mean, part of it was obviously part of it is like I was young, so you got a, a little bit of ego of like, yeah. dude, I'm I'm literally you need an ego. I'm it, trying to bro, pursue listen, my shit. Any artist that doesn't have an ego is not an artist, man. You you, you gotta have some ego, uh, uh, to get yourself on stage and to have people look at you and like and you. talk the whole yeah, time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or talk or perform or rap or whatever, man, yeah. or sing whatever it is. Anything I don't care if you're juggler yeah you know uh you gotta have an ego uh, uh but but you know obviously it's it's it's, it's, it's gotta be an ego that's under healthy, control healthy yeah. ego yeah. yeah so so like you're saying so you didn't you didn't want to um sell uh, pitbull's bubble heads right yeah i mean it was tough i was just like man it sounds like a lot of fun but i was like dude i got i got a baby on the way i'm i'm still trying to get my stuff going really right. off the ground so it was one of those. Was like I know I'm gonna miss out, but I gotta kind of stay on my on my path. Okay, and then so you decided to do that. And what was your first? What was your first? Um, you know, song, man. Your first hip hop, you know, something that, that popped hit, off. That hit. What was your first one? Well, you know what? Um, there was there's this hip hop magazine. Any hip hop fans out there? You've heard of the Source magazine. So Houston was like a hot spot at a point in time where a lot of MTV, everybody brought their cameras down. Okay. So the Source Magazine decided to do this huge layout with um, the locals, right? Okay. The, the godfather of Houston rap, uh, J Prince, Rap A Lot Records, and, and, and other Houston artists. And I was included in that 
that was super major because it was this huge spread. We were making a splash as a city. And uh, some people were there with Pepsi and Yahoo. Yahoo, right? That, I'm dating myself. Yahoo.com or whatever. Okay. And they said, hey, we're going to play a beat on this speaker. Would okay. you like to rap? Would you want to participate? You just right. have to act like you're grabbing the mic from here. When you're done, you pass it. And I was just like, okay. I did my little eight-bar rap, passed it. I didn't think anything of it. Well, this thing went viral. This at the time, right? I don't know. It might have been early, mid two thousands. But you did you actually rap? Yeah, I rap. So were, were you freestyling or something? No, you already I, had? I had something I had written like okay. earlier that week okay. that was for a, a feature for another artist. But it got compiled with all these other talents, and it it's somehow the timing. I don't know. Pepsi. I think Pepsi put money behind it. Okay. Obviously, Yahoo had some interest in making sure it got eyeballs. Okay. Long story short, it turned into a thing where other cities wanted to do the mic pass. It was like the first mic pass thing, and we just got lucky. Right. And um, it was just a, a series of events. So that was, so what was, because you remember what it was, bro? Uh, the rap. The rap song, what would you say? It was, um, <laughs> Chingo Bling, the Tamale Man, Grill Worth a Hundred Grand, Bobblehead in Hand, Popo Make Me Do the Running Man, Cowboy Hat. I'm gonna show you where I'm coming from. Uh, damn, how does it go? Uh, I'm fly like big pun on prom night with a cummerbund. My money stretch got longevity, though. Pulling white girls with feds from the 70s show. Because when Chingo's in the house, all the mommy sacule, bule, bule, nalgas yule, let's do it. <laughs> or something uh, like that. Uh, I like that, bro. <laughs> I, 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 I think that, man. Yeah, uh, some old uh, school shit. <laughs> yeah. So, no, bro. So, okay, so that, so it was like a little snippet of who you were. And that's that's what blew you up. Oh, uh, that that was like that was that, that got a lot of eyeballs for sure. Okay. And then MTV came and they're like, "Yo, we want to do some stuff. We we want to put you on uh, one of these segments." I was like, "Who to look out for? What's next? Okay. On the radar type of thing." And and dude, at that point when MTV came, I was still living at my mom's. Okay. So we filmed it at a taco truck uh, around the corner, and then when we were done. And I was like, okay, well, time to go back to my mom's house. Right, 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 right. No, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. I mean, no. Yeah. I don't care how much money you make when you first get started, bro. Everybody's starting somewhere before you can get yourself together. So, so that that was you were moving your way up, and then uh, you had some more. You had some more success from there, obviously, right? You you know the big highlight. Getting to work with Willie Barsena, man. Nah, McAllen, stop, Texas. Up, no, 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 no. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to be cheesy, nah, bro. bro. I'm no, not trying no, to. I know I, it's your show. No, no, no. I know no, it's. No, the, no, I know bro. it's episode six, bro. Stop, stop, bro. Stop, can I? Can stop, I be nothing. honest? I can't be authentic, bro. No, no. I thought this course, was a safe course, space, bro. Of course, go, bro. Yeah, no, but, real fucking time, bro. bro. You, you, so you're with, you're with Pitbull. You were, you, then and then you went my, with Pete my Diddy, Willie Barsena, and uh, and then uh. No, no, bro. And then um, <laughs> he's like, "You fast forward in the story." Too. No, 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 no. So how did you go? Like, where did you say, "Man, fuck, man, I, I, I'm gonna, I, I'm not gonna continue with this rapping." Oh uh, yeah. Like something made you. Yeah. Like okay, I don't want to call it give up, quit, yeah. or whatever, because yeah. you just transferred. Yes. You know, it's like a, Facts. it's like a guy that's a boxer, right? Let me yeah. give you an example, and just just to put it in perspective for you, it's a guy. It's like a guy that's a, a, a boxer, and and maybe he's. He's lost one too many fights, yeah. right? Because in boxing, you, He's a little you punch know, drunk. no, 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 not punch <laughs> drunk, but no, in boxing you can't have too many losses because, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you get tarnished. You know, it's not like, it's not like baseball or something where you could lose a lot of games and or Jordan, boxing, Jordan uh, uh, missed a lot of shots. Right? Exactly, what, you know. So what I'm saying is, so this cat goes from this. I'm hypothetically saying here, uh, 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 it's a boxer that transfer mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that says, you know what, I, I think I can do MMA. So how did you go from? Yeah. I'm a I'm a rap, and you know what? I'm gonna give up rapping. Like yeah. something made yeah. you quit to say, I want to do stand up. Like what yeah. the fuck? You know? Yeah. Like I got what, burnt what, out, dude. What, got, what burned you out? From, I got from from, 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 the, from rapping. It, it was probably a, a combination of things, but I just specifically remember thinking like, I remember being in a venue and being in a situation where. Obviously, your, your career has plateaued a little bit, right? But you're in a situation where you, you're like, okay, damn. Okay, so all these opening acts paid to open up, and that's how you sent the deposit, you know what I mean? And 
Uh, and it's just kind of like, well, shit, maybe I should be a little bit more picky about who, how the flyer, like, because I felt like I was putting my brand in the hands of uh, different promoters in different markets. And I, I just kind of got burned a couple of times where it left a bad taste. And I, I just had to be smart. And I thought to myself, okay, this isn't exactly what you signed up for because the fans' experience in some of these scenarios weren't ideal. Right. So I had to kind of pivot and take a step back. And I started focusing on, I started turning down gigs. Okay. So it's like, okay, I'm not going out to these cities. You're not going to be able to just fly me out and, and do a little show. I'm going to just step back. And I started doing some acting. I, okay. I, I, uh, I got with an acting coach, did a couple independent films. And I was really trying to like jujitsu my way out of this fucking side well, control. I, so you didn't like. I, it, I, you, I got really you, frustrated. You didn't, like, you didn't like the business. You didn't like rapping. I got burnt it, it out. It looked like you just didn't like it at all, bro. Yeah. And, and thankfully, thankfully, you know, with, with the support of my family, merch, like all my like t shirt stuff, like my hats and mm -hmm. different designs and. I started doing skits, and you know what? You know what really frustrated me, Willie, is what frustrated me was I had kind of pigeonholed myself. I, I painted myself in a corner where people only knew one character; they only knew one side. Okay. So once yeah. once I was able to give myself the freedom, I had to like I had to like pull teeth to show this is what I look like without a cowboy hat. You know, okay. this is me in a fucking baseball cap okay. at the moment. Like, relax, you know? Right. Settle down, put away your pitchforks. And I had to kind of just take a step back and, like, um, show people through other skits and other things. I had to show people I'm not just this one thing. Like, I've, I've there's a lot more to me. There's so many more layers. Yeah. But it's just so happened that this first thing that I showed, presented you guys... You guys really took to it. So the way you come in the game, a lot of times that's the way people. So okay, so how did you get yourself into comedy though, bro? It's like, how did you say, I'm, because you know it's a different animal, man. It's a, you know, it's a different vibration from rapping to, yeah. to yeah. I'm gonna talk to the audience and 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 deliver stand up, man. Uh, you know, because listen, the first time I heard of you, bro, I had never heard of you. You know, uh, you know, and but then I, I'm not a I'm not a big rap guy, so you know, to me, you know, I all I know is like worked in, I was working at a comedy club, and then say they said they said you okay it's the first time I heard of you, they said I got there a week after you, and then uh, the comedy club owner tells me uh, Chingle Bling was here, and like Chingle what the <laughs> fuck I was like cause I hadn't heard of you right, and I, I, and, and they said. Yeah, you know, and then the, this is all the, the owners trying to put pressure on me, right? He's like, oh, you know, he, he sold out like oh. five shows. Hey, not oh, no you, more. You, you, right, right? <laughs> no, 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 bro. You were, so how, how were you able to start? Like, cause was it the heat, the heat from rapping that that the audience followed you? Because yeah, um, is that is that is that were you able to keep that following, bro, from from rapping? And they were like, okay, well, let's follow him to this next. Well, some people did. There was there was a little bit of that, but also, like for example, when I did this one Canelo um, skit, that like really boosted my Facebook numbers, and um, so you know how to use social media as a as were, were you were you is there something that you had a lot of help? <laughs> is that people that knew social media helped you? I mean, it, it was just me. Honestly, it was me and my buddies like experimenting and just talking shit, improvising. I, at one point, I had a show called Wetback Wednesday, where like we literally just made a backdrop, and you know I'd introduce it. Yo, welcome to Wetback Wednesday. I edited the whole thing, and like that. Did you was, get a lot of flag because you used the word? Wetback? I mean, I was immature. Because that's that's like it's the very derogatory. You know yeah. what? A lot of yeah, Latinos yeah, yeah. is like the N word, yeah, yeah. bro. I, I was I was so, very polarizing. I was just I was inspired by like but, in living color. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get you, but did you get any? No, I didn't really. No, I mean, I'm sure mature people like but any backlash from from like Latinos that like, are like me, righteous. You know, me right now, looking back, like I'm giving myself backlash. So anybody who's mature <laughs> at right. the time, looking at what I was doing, they probably were just so they didn't say anything. I didn't really hear a lot of mm. that. 
So it was definitely a flash in the pan. It was a chapter, but it was part of figuring out, like, like I stumbled across, I fell forward. Okay. So, for example, when, uh, when Canelo was a new fighter and he was fighting Floyd Mayweather, my buddy uh, Frank Lopez from Compound Films, he flew into L.A. I was, I was living in L.A. at the okay. time. Uh, I had an apartment in East Los. He flew in, and you could hear the refrigerator from my apartment, like, running in the background. Right. But that shit, like, the next day or so, I think the algorithm maybe has switched. Right. But the next day, like, my neighbor, my buddy had a studio down the street. He's like, hey, man, man, everybody's sending me this shit. My friend from high school that I hadn't seen in, like, forever mm-hmm. was like, bro, people sharing this stuff. Like, wh- where have you been? And... Well, you did, you did, new you, people discovered You did me. a skit. You did a skit on Canelo. Yeah, I did, I did like a, I guess, a, a, what would you call that? Um, an impression or yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah, you did a parody. Yeah, basically. You did a parody yeah. of, of Canelo. And that yeah. that was, that blew enough for uh, to get your foot in the, in the comedy clubs? Well, the, the because comic... You see, you see, you see, no, cause, the cause comic I, club is later. I feel like, okay, because I feel like... From the way I and it was a few years back, bro. I honestly, it's like I don't know. I think five years ago, six years ago, when I started, when I heard that you like sold out this comedy club, it might have been. And, about and five so, years. but did you, but did you, did you go through the proper channels? And not everybody does, bro. Because there's cats that yeah. just the influencer, you know, the yeah. YouTubers. Because you go, you go from opener, yeah, few years, uh, feature a few years, and 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 battle yeah, your ass no. to become a headliner. So no. so did you, you didn't go through no. those channels, no, right? I, I definitely I respected the art, the craft for sure. Mm-hmm. I I always approached it very humbly. I knew I was gonna bomb. Um, I knew I was gonna fail. I was always respectful. I never wanted to bump anybody at open mics. Mm-hmm. And uh, a lot of my buddies in 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 the comedy world back in Houston, okay. they'll tell me straight up. They'd be like, bro. When I first heard you were trying to dip your damn foot in our shit that we put in work, yeah. they were like, we, we, didn't, we didn't really appreciate that. They're like, but we saw that how you were humble about putting in your work and paying your dues. And, um, but but when, the comedy, when the comedy club thing happened, right. I, was, I was like um, doing like guest spots. I was just learning. I was like super beginner, uh, just kind of like popping up, trying to figure out my first five minutes. Right. And somehow, some way, I I got the opportunity to do a San Jose Improv. Wow. Well, it's, it's, it's a good club. It was man. like it's super a club. It's, great, it's, it's, great club. Yeah. Uh, I'll be there this year. But it was like off night. They didn't really know who I was. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, it it went crazy. Like it, it was just perfect timing. Maybe I had a parody out. Uh, I don't know if hotline bling was out yet, right. but it, it like went, it went great. So next Damn. thing you know, they're like, Hey dude, you want to do Ontario? I was like, I don't know what that is, but sure. And boom, I do Ontario. It went uh, phenomenal. Next thing you know, uh, Judy Brown from levity yeah. is like, who the hell are you? You need to come to the office. Cause we just have a lot of questions. Because you're they're, just bringing in a lot of numbers. I mean, they're just, they're like, okay, what's your yeah. home club? I was like, I don't know what that is. Yeah. They're like, well, do you have an agent? I was like, ah, not really. And they're like, okay, so what the fuck, you know, what is your deal? So they, they pretty... Hold, hold that yeah. thought, bro. Yeah. Hold that thought. Hold it. Don't. I'm going to go pee, bro. Pee break. I like that, bro. I know Judy Brown, man. Yeah, that was a cool uh, experience for sure. Yeah, let's fix that one first. Uh, what are we doing? Nice. Oh, I'm crooked in the camera. First, first things first. You you trying to get that boy Chorro, bro, with the coffee, the Starbucks, and the fucking. Yeah, bro. <laughs> the worst CrossFit ever. My, yeah. my, my stomach is uh, it's disciplined. To you got a lead belly. <laughs> Dude, once I started cutting back on caffeine, bro, and I, I was real bad about drinking water, because uh-huh. it tastes like nothing. Okay. And I've been, dude, I've been putting everything from tahin. I've been trying to put something. It's I put cayenne water. pepper. Yeah, I put. It has to have taste. I put salt. Meal. Who? Meal. What is that? Meal. Oh, the the sugary the. Don't drink the yeah. Sugar free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like putting um, salt, especially the. Um, 
like the high end shit that my buddy has at his oh, at his place, Himalayan. like Celtic Himalayan, Himalayan yeah. because it has uh, minerals. So you it you, hydrates you right? It hydrates you better. You you don't have it's brain good, fog. Good for your skin, right? Too. It's just I think it's good for everything because. How much do you put? Um, I just put like a little pinch. Just to give it in, enough. In a, in a water bottle or a cup or? Uh, I'll get like my uh, my jug, like my little hydro thing. Because the funny thing is, my wife would always be on my ass. Like, you don't drink enough water. You don't drink enough water. She'd be on my ass. And I don't really listen. Yeah, yeah. My buddy Juan is like, hey, dude, I was listening to this podcast. And fact, fact, stat, stat. Uh-huh. And I'm just like, oh, shit. I need to get on it. So, so my wife is pissed. She's like. <laughs> get some, new, get some new more like get some an ice cube. Hey, so so so, do you feel a difference? Like I do. Not, from not drinking coffee anymore. No, I I have my one cup in the morning. Oh, okay. Sometimes you I'll do a second. Coffee. Huh? Mushroom coffee. Right Mushroom that. coffee. Yeah, I love that stuff. Yeah. Um, the yeah. new trop, new tropic. New tropic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's pick it up. Let's pick it up. What he's talking about? Uh, San Jose Judy. Improv. Okay. Yeah, Judy, uh, Judy, uh, yeah, Judy Brown. Judy, Judy Brown. Brown. I know who she is, bro. I know her her uh, husband is that. Uh, a comedian. She's married to a comedian. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I forget the cat's name, man. But uh, no, I know. I know her. So. Well, okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So you you did San Jose Improv, and then you, you go to Ontario. Obviously, the numbers were good, right? Yeah, they were, they how, were like sold did, out. Okay. How did you do this? Is this? How did it go? How did you go viral like that? Was it? I think. I. I feel was like. Was it with that Canelo? Was that Canelo skit? I, I think it. Nah. I think at that time. I think at that time it might have been. I don't know exactly what I had going, mm-hmm. but I got very lucky. The timing was perfect, mm-hmm. and I, I got my foot in the door enough to where other clubs start calling. And now I have to develop an act. Now I have to really show and prove and really um, show that I'm not just one, a YouTuber. Right, right. Because, because when I had the meeting with, uh, at Levity with uh, Judy Brown, she was like, oh, so you're one of those like video guys. Okay, okay, we're starting <laughs> to see that. It was like the beginning of that. Okay. It was like the beginning of seeing that. It, right. it, obviously, it got worse later where like they're having like these random kids coming in the afternoon and, and they don't really have an act. And, right. And everyone's confused and it's like a fucking meet and greet. It's chaos, but... I've seen some of those. Like, I'm, 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 I'm happy that you got through it, bro, because I've seen a lot of these guys that, that do good like on social media and they'll put little sketches... And, 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 and no, I've gone to see somebody that, that obviously, you know, I'm not here to dog anybody, but I went to go see someone that was extremely popular and sold the place out, and there was lines around the fucking, you know, and no whole show. neighborhood. No, and I saw it, and I go, God damn, the show, this right? fucking the material, sucks balls. Yeah, the material, no material. Yeah, because, but, uh, but obviously you, you... I had to play catch-up. You, you, you managed to, to stick around, bro, so... So you, how much how much material did you have when they had you headlining these clubs? So you got to have a killer 45, bro, as a headliner. I, honestly, I circumvented like the way I was structuring my show, it's almost as if I was kind of like a uh, MC host mm-hmm. where it would it would it would come out total to about maybe maybe 40, I, my memory's fucked up. Maybe 35, 40. And it was shitty material, but I would come out, I'd do 10, I'd bring out like a heavy hitter from back home. Yo, we got Javi Luna, give it up, boom. I know Javi. So, yeah. so, Shout so out to Javi. okay, so you, I, I, okay, so what you did was, uh, you, 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 you got creative. Finessed. You got creative, right? Because you got, you, 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 you kind of like, okay, you I, see, I'm not following you're going to see Chingo Bling, <laughs> you're going to see Chingo Bling, but Chingo Bling is going to host tonight. Uh, he's going to be, he's going to be Martin Lawrence on Def Comedy Jam. Okay. I'm just gonna okay. I'm gonna do some I'm gonna work out some shit. I'm gonna do some characters. I might go change outfits and come out as some indio that I might bring up someone on stage. Damn. That's like, what, that's, what you, that's exactly what Concrete did. You know Concrete, right? Yeah, that's my boy. That's yeah. exactly what Concrete yeah, does. Doing, man. Yeah. Is is when I first saw him do his stand up, he would come, you know, host. And exactly, I think I think he stole a, a page out of your book, bro. And that that's smart, man. He, he's come a long way. He just yeah. he just did Houston. And he's doing stuff in my city mm-hmm. that a lot of artists in my city are not able to do. Okay. So he has a lot of genuine love. I met my, my my new barber. I met him at the Concrete Show. He was there to support Concrete. And he's like, oh, shit, Chingo Bling, here's my card. 
No, no, he's he's no, killing. I, I, he, yeah, he he's he's got definitely, bro. Uh, uh, I saw I saw his sketches, and the first time I saw his sketch, I reached out to him, bro, and just said, mm. "Dude, you're, you're 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 a beast." Yeah. And then he, he transferred over to to stand up, which is a different animal, man. You know, uh, and I give it to you, cats, uh, for uh, being able to uh, take on such a battle, man, because I, you know. He, he's doing it right though. Cocky's yeah. doing it right. I saw him recently. His show has developed. No, no, no. Yeah, he he yeah. he 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 respects the craft. Yeah. You know, you respect the craft. Let me ask, how did you how did you come up with the name Chingo Bling, bro? <laughs> how, how did Chingo Bling? Because it was your rapper name. Yeah. And it's your name as a stand up. It's my yeah, it's my, yeah, like my yeah, artist yeah. name. Well, how did the the name? Uh, I, Man, long story. I, I, I know what both words mean, but how did, how did you? <laughs> Chingo de Blink. How, how did you? Is yeah. So long story short, I was a college radio DJ, and I started doing skits on local artists' albums, and uh, I was lucky enough for them to like. They'd be like, "Yeah, dude, like shit, do something funny, and it might make the cut." So I would do different voices, different characters. I would come up with skits to bring their album, you know, add some uh, some flavor. And there was one time, my buddy Fade Dog, he was putting out an album, and I was going to do a skit. And I did this one particular thing where it's like this Chingo Bling guy that's trying to sign him. He's like a fast, wheeling and dealing guy or whatever. And I step out the, the, the recording booth, and they're all laughing. And I was just like, hey, uh, that one, when I do that one? That that that's Chingo Bling right there, and they're like, "What? Who? Say, hold on, say it again." And I was like, "Okay, that one right there. Th when y'all want that kind of skit, that's Chingo Bling. That that right there was Chingo Bling." And they're like, "What the fuck is that?" They're just like, "Oh my god, say it again, like Chingo what?" And I was like, "Like a lot of bling." So somebody gave you that name? No, I, I just it, it appeared. It just like came to my head. Oh, oh you were saying that's you. I saying. was telling them. I was like, "That's gonna it's be Chingo, Chingo bling. bling," and they're just like. Oh shit! That what the? They were just like laughing at the words, and I was like, okay, it's got a little ring to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just liked that it had a little bit of Spanish, a little bit of English. It was it was, it was yeah. a little edgy, kind of you know, kind of inappropriate, because it, it's banned a lot of places. Like mm -hmm. like on Apple Music, if you search my name, <laughs> and I'm a, I'm a musician, you search my name, and it's like C apostrophe apostrophe like asterisk 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 bling. Yeah. Okay, so it was just something you just came out. You just it just stuck. You just said it, and, and well, well, it was like some branding type stuff. So you you um, okay, so I, you went to I I I read you went to prep school, bro. So high what, school, yeah. What, what was it? What, was that a like an? You went as an artist? Were you an artist major? Nah, dude. In school, uh, or? That was like um. Super expensive, super rich, rich kid school. I was from the hood, but in middle school, I was like in this magnet type yeah. of program. Okay. So in eighth grade, like uh, this organization called A Better Chance (ABC), they showed up. They pat. They gave like fifteen kids a letter. And like I wanted to run the streets, but you know I wanted. Yeah, you know yeah. I was thugging in books though. I kept getting scholarships. I okay. couldn't. I couldn't run the streets. So they gave this letter. And I read it, and it said, like, you know, invitation, have your parents come to this um, auditorium. There's going to be a presentation. We're offering uh, full ride scholarships to inner city kids, to uh, East Coast preparatory schools. Okay. And I was just like, okay, I don't have any family on the East Coast. Like, I'm good. I just threw it in my bag, forgot about it. Okay. All my friends did the same. They're like, we're not going out of state. Like, right. pff, fuck that. Well... I have a pesky old, older sister. She's 13 years older than me. She happened to see the letter, and she's like, huh, I think I'm going to run this by mom and dad. I think this this sounds this is interesting. We, we should probably go attend and see what they're talking about. And I'm like, ah, great, all right, whatever. I'll, I'll humor them. So this this gentleman is up there in this big auditorium, and he's, he's showing these slideshows of these, like, manicured lawns and these prep schools, and mm. I'm just like, Damn, that shit's fucking badass, but okay. I forget about it. I actually, I missed the deadline on purpose to turn in the uh, application. Because okay. I, I was the baby, dude. I'm, right. the, I'm the spoiled baby of the family. Right, right, right. I'm, I'm, I'm 10 years younger and 13 years younger than my older sisters. So my sister's like, hey, 
what what happened to the application? Right. And I was like, oh, man, rats. Looks like I uh, missed the deadline. She's right. like, you know what? I'm going to be pesky, and I'm going to call and just see if they make an exception. Okay. She's like, hey, good news. Uh, finish the essay. Fill it out. Yada, yada. They, they're going to wait. I was just like, fuck. I was like, I'm not going to get accepted anyway. Right, right. I end up getting... Um, uh, an offer to the school in Asheville, North Carolina, and then another offer to a school in New Jersey, but that was a full ride. Okay. And long story short, bro, they're like, we're all hopping on a plane. All right. We're just going to go to New Jersey, and the, you're going to go see the dorm, and then they're going to take the parents over here and talk to them. And if you don't like it, you can always come back home. All right. So, dude, like, we're in the hotel... The next day is the day where, like, my parents are going to fucking drive off. Okay. And I'm just in a hotel like, oh, shit, dude. Like, I'm 13. Okay. Like, what the fuck? And they leave. And I'm like, oh, shit. This shit's getting real. Right, right, right. So at first, it was like culture shock. There's a fucking blizzard. Worst blizzard in 10 years. Yeah. And I'm, I'm from Texas. Like, yeah, I'm yeah, used yeah. to hurricanes and rain and humidity and mosquitoes. And, uh... So, the, you know, they drive off, and I'm like, all right, shit's getting real. Uh, I don't, you know, I make a couple friends, but I'm, like, homesick. I'm, like, uh, it's, like, trauma. It's really traumatizing. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're 13, man. Yeah, it's trauma. I'm, what like, staring kid? at a cinder black wall, like, right, what right. the fuck? So then I start to make friends, and I'm like, oh, shit. I no longer feel like uh, an experiment to, to provide diversity. Okay. You know, in the brochure. Because at first, I had a chip on my shoulder. And I'm just like, man, I'm just here because it's fucking yeah, rich they wanna, kids. They, they, wanna they, they want to say there's two Mexicans, me yeah. and Paco. Yeah, yeah. Me and Paco actually from Mexico. He's yeah. valedictorian. Shout out, Paco. And uh, and uh, that motherfucker won all the Hispanic awards, bro. Oh, yeah. He won all that shit. I was, I was nothing. But, I, I, you know, I, learned, I got into art. I had a really cool art teacher. And it, it was a like really cool experience. Well, all that, I, I believe all that created... Who you are, yeah. who you became as a rapper, and who you became uh, as as a comedian, man. Because without you knowing, uh, you're around people that are artists, and you're a kid. It's inevitable that they're gonna rub, it's gonna rub off on you, man. Yeah, I, I believe I believe that's what what happened, man. I, that's yeah. it's a quite a, a turn of events for you as a Big as a 13 year old, bro. <laughs> yeah, so. First, I didn't want to be there. Then I didn't want to leave because right, right, I, I got in trouble for like cheating on some fucking take home math quiz or whatever. Oh. And my mom was like, look, if you're going to be messing up and being in school suspension or whatever, you might as well come home. And I was like, no, I actually like it now. Like, I'm, I'm actually wanting to apply to colleges on the East Coast. And they're like, no, 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 no. You're coming to Texas, bro. I'm like, stop. So this is, this is man, this is what I. I I, uh, I find fi fascinating about about being an artist, you know, because um, obviously when when you were when you were riding that, you know that wave, man. Like you know, we all heard about you. We heard about you over here. You, you know, you 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 uh, sell, you know. Obviously, you went from the rapping, which was successful, and then and I and I you know to your 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 comedy, man. You know, you built it too, and then you and then you you you've established yourself. But there was a drop off, bro, yeah. with you that I heard about. I didn't know a lot about it, but I know that this country is, um, it'll pick a side. Yeah, yeah, divide. All right. Divide, it, it's yeah. very, it, yeah, it, yeah, man, yeah. and it doesn't matter what yeah. it is. It doesn't yeah. matter if your uh, religious views. Your, yeah. Especially your, now. Your, yeah, yeah. Now your political views. It doesn't super. matter. Your, you know, where you're pro this, con, you know, whatever. Yeah. But w w w there was a situation, man, that I heard happen to you. Yeah. But I don't want to say anything because I, I, it's, it's, re it's very easy to say, oh, he. He chose a political side, and the other side uh, wanted to cancel him. You know, yeah. and it, people talk about canceling, right? People go, yeah. "Oh, the left cancels, but the right cancels." Yeah, 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 they yeah, both yeah. cancel, yeah. bro. So, I, I, like, if you ask me my political views, and we might disagree, agree to disagree. Sure, I'm sure you sure, know we, we 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 get along, bro. But for me, I think the left and the right are fucking full of it, man. Yeah, uh -huh. but yeah. you. Uh, there was a situation where you you, you had a you know pushback uh -huh. from 
because from the left, because you were you were uh, in support of uh, Trump. I voted, yeah, I voted for Trump. You voted in, uh, for 2020, Trump. Twenty twenty. Yeah. And, and and listen, brother, I have so many friends, man, that voted for Trump. As many friends that fucking hate him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? I have friends that are like, dude. You understand? Trump is gonna save America, yeah, yeah. and then I have friends that are like, dude, he's start World I War fucking III. hate that motherfucker, yeah, 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 yeah. like he's that, like fucking, don't even fucking say his name. Yeah. Me, I'm always like, look, the left and the right, yeah. they, they, they both have good and bad uh, uh, when it comes to running this country, man. But I think, for whatever reason, man, there's no middle ground. But can you talk a little bit about why you? You decided to to go hardcore right when this when you got yeah. that backlash, right? Because yeah, 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 you yeah. lost how many followers I, did I, you lose? Uh, I think you my, went from what to what, bro? I don't, on Instagram. I, don't, I didn't, dude. I didn't keep track, but my. I, I oh, yes, no, you did. No, Shut I, the honestly, fuck up. I swear to God. Every artist dude, knows no, I swear. how many tickets they can sell. You know? No, Willie, I, uh, I promise to you, dude. Like, some people say, <coughs> some people come to me and they're like, dude, you lost 20,000. 20, some people say, like, dude, I, I would check your numbers, bro. And it's like, dude, he's at 16. Someone's needed to call him. Someone needs to tell okay. him something. Like, like, bro, you're shooting yourself in the foot. So, it, it was... was yeah. No, no, no. I want, I, I, I want to know how that, how that started. Tell me the how whole that started, thing, bro. The whole thing's super interesting. So, so to 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 rewind a little bit, I was very um, ignorant to political shit. I just knew the surface level stuff. I, I just knew that as an artist, when I when I started pushing all the like they can't deport us all stuff. It was literally me as an artist expressing myself, being polarizing, like really coming from a place of like son of immigrants. I was seeing it was election year. I saw how certain media was like scapegoating Latinos. And I, I just I just was hearing a lot of like they're blaming us for stuff and they're, they're making it seem like we're not all good people. And mm -hmm. and I was definitely um, throughout my schooling and my education. I just remember like teachers saying like, oh, the Democrats, they're the ones that, you know, care about the poor and the downtrodden. I'm like, oh, fuck yeah. Hell yeah, that's my team. Right, right. Or they'd say like, you know, they're the ones that care more about the minorities, you know, so put that. Or it's, oh, okay, that shit. I got I got all the info I needed. Uh, you know, I'd hear stuff like, oh, the Republicans, you know, this and that. And I didn't really know too much. Okay. But, but I was very vocal about border issues and you know i was like so i guess were, you could so, i was like woke before so, woke so, was a so thing. you were left super, super i was like left. i was and, just and, and, i was just democrat you were, were by you default. a stand-up at the time no 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 you were in a stand-up actually when i started stand-up i was very anti-trump okay. when, when i first because i did a net i licensed a netflix special uh a project mm -hmm. to netflix and it was called they can't deport us all i did okay. an album called they can't deport us all and i would always say stuff in lyrics and sometimes i'd I'd call out like Obama sometimes okay. in lyrics and stuff. So I, I'd try to be a little somewhat neutral. But I kind of knew that... Which like, a lot of people don't know that more people got deported during Obama, Obama than yeah. anybody else in yeah. history, right? Deporter in chief, yeah. Yeah, so, I'm, not, so I'm not a fan now, but I did vote for him. Um, when, when, when it was Trump versus Hillary, I don't think I voted that year. And when I saw Trump won, I, t I remember t she was my girlfriend at the time. I was like... Uh, Hillary? Uh, no, no, my wife, my, my oh, wife now. Okay, <laughs> no, my that, wife now. Because right? he right? said yeah, Trump. Yeah, that's, that's Pete Davidson. She was my girl. That's somebody she, else. She was my, she was my side she chick. She's my the Aina time. Carnal, okay. La so, Hillary, uh, La Clinton. She got a lot of bodies. Mm -mm. But um, no, I remember telling my girlfriend like, ah, "Fuck this fucking orange motherfucker, this TV show dude that I used to like in the '80s, like just seeing him as a as a." public pop icon mm -hmm. i was like we're gonna be a joke no one's gonna fucking take us serious right. he's a fucking tv guy he's not a politician and everyone thinks just because he's some business dude that did some real estate shit he's gonna know how to run government i was like let's just go to bed and pray for the best because then you woke up and he was president yeah he woke up he was president <laughs> they're like inaugurating him, and i'm just like Psh, whatever let me just focus on what i gotta do okay and those next four years I was so busy working that I didn't have time to pay attention to okay, politics. Okay. So fast forward, uh, pandemic hits, you're locked down, you're at home, <laughs> you're not essential, the comedy clubs are closed. Yeah. Now now you're talking to people and you're just like, hey man, what's up with this fucking thing, this, uh, this illness? And 
so what are we supposed to do? And you slowly starting to look into stuff. And you're like, so did it come from soup? And you're starting to realize that the media is just kind of playing games. And then you start to like look at things different. Okay. Um, so long story short, when I got canceled was because um, on my Twitter, this is around the time where I started like looking at things different. Like, wait, so what happens to these people when they're coming in a caravan? Or like, so mm-hmm. who's all benefiting? It's like, what's fentanyl? You know, I'm right. just like kind of like fucking catching up. Like, what the hell's going on? Okay. And um, so I start to like my brain starts to really fuck with me where I'm like, bro, I think I'm oh, my God, I think I'm chasing changing my stance. Like I'm either I'm maturing, like maybe I'm a taxpayer. I got three daughters. Like I'm looking at all this crime stuff. Right, right. I'm kind of starting to like law and order. Like I'm a taxpayer. Why are we sending money everywhere? Why is America falling behind in education and all these things? Right. And I, it was the summer of love. They were riding like crazy. And I'm just like, all right. You know, I started changing my stance and I went live on a Periscope, which was like the Twitter live. Okay. At this point, Lil Wayne had already said some nice things about Trump. Like, it, you know, it started, I was like, oh shit, the coast is clear. So you figured, you, you figured everything was, <laughs> I he, the was, was ready. He, he was softening it up, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so I told my wife, hey, I'm just going to go live real quick. And, you know, I think voting's tomorrow. I'm just going to say a couple things. She's like, all right, well, uh, Okay, well, come to bed. Don't don't be too long. I finished going live. I'm, I'm saying things like, you know, this Biden guy, I don't know. What's his relationship with China? And I'm asking questions, and people are leaving comments and all this. So I go to bed, and she's like, how'd it go? You were back there for a while. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, eh, it went pretty well. She's like, did you say anything that might, you know, get taken <laughs> the wrong way? All right. And I was like, Nah, you'd have to go in and splice out and delete words and make a compilation. I don't think anyone's going to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, somebody did. So the next morning... Oh, so they edited? They went in and just kind of... It's still my words, but it's kind of like... you stand behind what was Yeah, yeah. I I never apologized. I never folded. I never Well, this is what the the country's about, man, is the, 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 uh, the right to believe... What you want to believe, yeah, free man? Speech, yeah. but, you know, free speech, exactly, bro. So, like I said, do I agree with everything in the right? I don't. I don't agree with everything on the left. But you know, I have the right to say that, man. You know, right? And which gives you the same right to believe how you believe. But but I know so I, what, I know what, I know what, I trip people up. What, what was the one thing that you think really stood out, bro? That for you that you think made the left, uh, you know... I just, I just pissed uh, off a lot of people because people took it really personal. They're just like, bro, you literally did a 180, bro. Like, you didn't... You just... No, I heard about that. That kind of went viral. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. went viral, I, bro. Because it was like... Cause this, this, I, this, I wish this, I had a song ready. Cause, I was, yeah, because this I was is like, yeah, I, I should have dropped the album right now. Because I, I would hear this. I would hear. Uh, I would hear uh, uh, Chingo Bling, which you Sell know, out, coconut. I would, Mal- yeah, Malinche. Yeah, I, I, Rich I, Trader. I, 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 I heard a lot of stuff like that, bro. I'm like, what? Hates really? his own. So <laughs> I didn't, you know. Uh, it, but it, but like I said, bro, I have friends that fucking love Trump. I have friends that hate him. To me, from what I heard, you know, through the grapevine, and then I'm glad we're talking here. It's like, oh, that guy is a fucking he's a, he's a right winger and he, everything i just listen, like man, you, i like you I, guys l- listen bro. bro listen this is how i feel man and tell me how you feel all right i'm an immigrant you know that's it's my son right there Fabian. it's the anchor say, baby say, right there say hi to everybody, Fabian, yeah. the anchor baby so, so, he doesn't <laughs> even, he doesn't even speak spanish man i think you know like 15 words bro because <laughs> i challenged you on stage before muscle <laughs> menos muscle <laughs> menos that's two so <laughs> so uh but I me mean, being uh, you know being an, an, an immigrant man um i did benefit from things from from the left you know i don't know if you know the left are the ones who uh had free meals in in the, in the public schools for mm-hmm. for kids that were there not just latino white black that that didn't uh couldn't afford lunch so it was it was the left yeah. who created yeah. that it was the left who created a lot of social issues that help us now i'm for 
welfare, welfare reform, bro. I believe if there's a family that can't eat and, and is here in America legally, welfare should be provided for these folks. But reform, you know, you got to go through the proper channels, right? Yeah. I feel the same way about immigration because when I was a kid, I came here, but yeah. man, bro, like I've said this before, I, we got in some long ass lines, bro, just trying to be a uh, 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 part of, the, uh, 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 you know, of America. Yeah. Trying to, so yes, I believe we should help uh, immigrants, but I, I don't think people should rush the borders. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. So I'm always in the middle of of, of, yeah. of both sides, bro. But I couldn't yeah. be cutting like couldn't say like no, yeah, you yeah. know, like like this that or like even cops, right? Yeah, you need like, immigrants. Like like you cops, need you, you you take take like cops, which I've said before many times. Like some people are like, yeah, fuck the cops, fuck the cops. Yeah. Um. Yeah, fuck the bad ones. Yeah, 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 for sure. But we need to, we need to uh, support the good ones, yeah, and then, it. and then, yeah, fix it. So fix there's it. a, I believe in a lot of reform, bro. Which, which some hard right, are are so hard right that they don't see reform. They see no, it's this way or fucking suck it. What was I think what's messing it up right now, bro? Is that so? No, no. So yeah. let me ask you: Have you ever been hard right? Like, like, like. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Hard right, hard left, bro. I mean, I, I, think, I think, I think, I think. went to prep school in yeah, fucking New right, York. Like, Don't fucking I'll, look I'll confused, fucker. Books. No, I'm no. not trying to look. Try all of a sudden, the fuck is like. All of a sudden, I'm on. <laughs> well, it, you know what? It was uh, like during COVID, man. Like there was no, there's so much information getting linked on on Instagram that like I think. Like a lot of people went down the rat. I went down a the lot of conspiracy hole. theories. Yeah, I, I remember. Uh, I, I I was uh, home with Camilo, my little. Uh, are you, are you, are you, are you uh, the, the, my youngest and, uh, kid? And, uh, you know Alex Jones yeah, or what? Yeah, yeah. and uh, dude, I went. I was, sh I was showing my brother, who's like twelve at the time. Oh wow! And I was like, bro, check this shit out. I was like, shit's crazy, huh? And I didn't. I, You're like, I this shit came out of a yeah, lab, and, not and, soup, homie. And then he, he was only twelve, and I, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I, I really <laughs> fucked him. You yeah, realized that was you for dick? years. You like, know, fucked him up. <laughs> he's, a little, yeah, damn, he's, a little, he's wearing a little Trump hat. But yeah, yeah, man. And then and then you see like you know like like I remember I was I was posting like conspiracy stuff on. Instagram, like I was, I was on a roll too, dude. La verga. You know, yeah, it's just, it's just nah. it was a crazy time, dude. Because yeah. like so everybody's was, home, that's yeah. what they do. Was this with? So was this during COVID, bro? That the situation happened? I, I think I think it was during the lockdowns where I'm like listening to certain podcasts and 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 people were like debunking stuff where they're like, yeah, yeah, where they'll say like, remember when they said Trump said drink bleach. And the media ran story after story after story. He said, drink bleach. He's telling people to ingest bleach. And they make right. these faces and they say it in a way to where you're like, why the fuck is this? God damn it. Everyone's mad. So they're like, this fucking orange fat fuck is telling people to God damn it, drink bleach. And then someone debunks it. They're like, here's the full clip. Watch it. And he's talking about this UV light technology. And he never said drink. And he never said bleach. And you right. watch it again. You're like... Oh shit! Like, wait, he never said disinfectant. Wait, what? Well, who? Where did where did bleach come from? It's like that was the news putting words in his mouth, you know. So, the, I guess some stuff that I believe in might be considered ultra fucking right wing, right. ultra fucking MAGA okay. to some people. Um, and when it comes to the border. You know, I actually no. took a, I took a little boat ride. I don't want to say too much. I took a little boat ride. I saw some shit. But what's happening right now on the border is is to it's like they're basically weaponizing people from Senegal, Africa. They're like everywhere, China. They're bringing they're bringing all these people through Panama, Panama, the Darien Gap, and you have all these organizations and and like the Chinese folk. They're using like TikTok and they're giving them instructions and they're telling them which gate to go and. And the way the laws are right now, the Border Patrol is literally just making sandwiches, changing diapers, and, and being Uber drivers. And they get on TV and they lie. They say, we just need more money and we just need more Border Patrol. What they don't tell you is they say, we need more money and more Border Patrol to hurry up and bring in more people faster. So, for example, when there were 15,000 Haitians under the bridge in, uh, I think it was Eagle Pass or Del Rio, mm -hmm. Texas, y'all can fact check. Um, the drone footage got out, mm -hmm. and it don't pinche des madre where everyone's like, "Oh my God, what's happening?" Well, this administration that's in right now, they don't like those bad optics, so they said, 
why is there this big group on the, under the bridge? This is, doesn't look good for us. And, and they say, well, sir, where it takes 90 seconds to, to swab the child and swab the adult with a con swab to 90 seconds to see if it's a DNA match. Are they related or not? And they're like, okay, well, then stop swabbing because you, you, you slowing down the Amazon logistics of the app of what we're doing with the cartels and all the other people that are involved to pump the people. So they're like, stop swabbing, speed it up. We don't want no ant pile to be visible. Well, now we don't know if the child is related to the person. So now a child trafficker mm -hmm. has no risk of getting caught. And that's the type of stuff that once I hear it, mm -hmm. I can't undo it from my head. Mm -hmm. So once I know about the rape trees and all these like really sad, scary things, right, right. I start to pay attention more. And it's just one of those where it's like, I can, in no good conscience, can I continue to be like Mr. Yeah, fuck the wall. They can't deport us all. Yada yada. It's like, hold on, bro. This is way more nuanced, and you're very, you're being very irresponsible. Just saying. no. Well, I, bro, you know, even me not being a a a, a right or a left. Yeah. I mean, to me, having uh, immigration reform is a nah. It's just a no brainer, bro. It's like no, nobody could just get in here without us finding out who they are. Yeah, you know? they throw or, away their ID. Yeah, before they come. yeah. So that that you know, uh, but but at the seat, I'm always middle ground, bro. And it, and you might say, oh, you're playing it safe, you pussy. But you know what, bro? You can call playing it safe all you want. But if you're married, and I was married to your mom for 25 years, bro. So I know about about uh how a relationship should go and and, and you got a girlfriend bro you, how long you been with her now four years about five years that's, that's a long that's a, that's fucking a, that's time a for chapter. a young dude that's a little so, chapter so right there. so you know and, and and uh and my buddy john right here knows and you know how long you been married bro uh about to be nine ten years okay bro you know this man i don't give a fuck anybody out there who's married man and and, and if you say I run my house my way or the highway. Your wife secretly wants you dead, man. I swear to God. You, you, there has to be a compromise. Yeah. What's compromise? Compromise middle ground. What's middle ground? It, it's in it, the ground is where you both uh, took a, an intellectual, uh, uh, logical, common sense stand to an answer. And there's these answers, but everybody's so left and so right. That they're, they're, playing they're, 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 they're playing games where they're, they're fucking right. with us. They're yeah. fucking with, yeah. with, with, with uh, the average Joe, man. The working so, class. Yeah, and, and, and a, lot of people are time, easy, a lot of people are easily manipulated, bro. You know? Uh, so, yeah, man. Uh, I agree. Uh, Everything so, you just said, I agree a thousand so, percent. So, you know, uh, do I agree with some things from the right? Yeah, man, I do. They're, they're agree. in cahoots. No, really, no, I, I do agree with some things the from the part, right. They're in cahoots. I do agree with some things with the right, and I do agree with some things with the left. But uh, but to say like uh, I'm hard right or hard left, I, yeah. I I couldn't, bro, because I'm I'm in. Uh, you know, I, I I have my own my own mind, and, and you know what? Maybe I mean? they caught you. Maybe COVID fucked you up, and you're that for that one moment. Yeah. You said something, and. You know, you believed it, or you still believe it, but yeah. they only got that, that they only got that one angle yeah, on yeah, your yeah. belief, right? Could well, that have happened? You know what it is, bro? Is people were fed a narrative because whatever I believe is in my head, and I'm I'm willing to talk about it, but it got filtered through the filter of a web of a page like Fools mm -hmm. Gone Wild. Yeah. So you're getting the Fools Gone Wild edit perspective with their caption, a. Hey, Clown face emoji. Where's this Levi from, right. or something? Right. Hey, right. on a scale of one to ten, how much of a coconut? Right. And it's like, whoa, you already framed the entire conversation. So what you just finished saying? I'm not left. I'm not right. I'm just concerned with hardworking people and us yeah. not getting screwed over. Right. And the thing about that too is, these, this left and this right, it keeps shifting. So, so, like John F. Kennedy, he might be considered hard right by modern day standards right just based on certain things he was saying because the goalposts it's almost like the left left me like i'm still standing here i still i still like cheap gas i don't like war right like i'll give you an example i had a conversation with a couple that came up to me we we're doing like a little event and they they were like they're like dude man we still support you but 
damn, that shit hurt. I, man, it was his the chick <coughs> and the dude. They're just like, man, yeah. bro. And they just man. they felt like I stabbed them in the back. Yeah. And I said, I said, you know what? I said, let me just tell you what I would like. I said, I would like for you guys not to worry about your kids getting shipped off to war. I, I would like that if your husband wants to be the only worker and breadwinner and you want to stay home with the kids, you'd be able to. Uh, I want right. gas to be cheap. I don't right. want your I don't want your taxes to be high. I don't want you to be burdened by high taxes. And I said, we kind of yeah, want. You sound left right now. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> you I, sound left I mean, as... I want I want America's education <laughs> to be better. Yeah. I want our kids to be like ready to compete. And I said, we all kind of want similar stuff. I saw we had two old white men as an option. I took my envelope from my family, my community, and I did my calculation. Okay, I know this about this guy. I know this about this guy. I saw what he did for four years. You've been around forever, and you got a lot of weird shit going on, and I kind of don't trust you. And I heard that, you know, I had a lot of dirt on Brandon. And I was just like, you know what? Based on cheap gas... Energy independent, national security, safety, uh, law and order. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go with this guy. I yeah. said, so that was just my but, calculation. It, it isn't like we had great choices, bro. Really, yeah, yeah, yeah. really you're picking between two, random two, two, two guys that fucking suck balls and which one sucks, <laughs> you know. Who it, sucks it, balls last? Who sucks balls a, last? A, a, a giant douche. Evil. And, uh, yeah, for South Park, <laughs> and right? A shit sandwich. And it's a giant douche. A, yeah, South Park nailed that. They always do, bro. But... Uh, <laughs> Listen, man, it's crazy that that during COVID, because it was COVID when when the shit hit the fan with you, right? With the politics, was yeah, it COVID? Yeah, it, it, it was 2020. It was, it was uh, election. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it's interesting, bro, that we're talking now, and people get a, a full perspective of yeah. how you see things, and it's a, a lot similar to the way I view things. You know, like like. You know, I, I, again, man, like, uh, it is let's take, let's take, let's take, let's take, uh, the veterans. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I've done so many shows for military, you know, and, uh, and I'm, I'm pro military, right? But, but also I said, I'm pro military. But there's some wars yeah, that no. we don't we don't need to be in, okay? And I'm pro military, like yeah, yeah. You know, let, let, let's 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 support our troops, yeah, we love the right? Troops. Which is which is a word. I mean, if you, I'm yeah. sure you did that yeah, one. I mean, support our troops. troops was a slogan that was created to make people pro war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The right? yellow, you know the yellow that, ribbon, right? the symbolism, yeah, propaganda. Yeah. yeah. So support to, our. So I'm like for the military, people. but okay, okay, motherfuckers. What about taking care of our vets when they come back? How come there's no slogan for that? There's no national slogan for that, you know? It, it's more like support our troops. Hey, what about, you know, let's really, really fucking take care of our vets yeah. that come back, man. Yeah. Uh, so, so listen, man, it, it's interesting because I really, before... Yeah, I, I don't like the warmongers. No, the people no. out there starting yeah, wars. I, I, well, here it is, uh, bro. Before us talking like this, because we've we've done shows together, yeah. but we we don't talk about it. you do your comedy, I do my comedy, we're cool, bro. But before this interview with you, I really thought you were gonna be hardcore, hardcore. <laughs> and I was I was ready, bro. I was ready to talk about, you know, things, but it's funny that that the way uh uh you know uh the, the, the social media uh you know can can uh, distort. Yeah, distort, bro. And 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 uh, so, no, it's interesting that you have that perspective, which is so similar to mine, you know. So so, I'm thinking shit that easily could have been me, you know. <laughs> you know, they could have got something I would have said and said. It's just okay, you know? I just believe in like basic common sense type shit, like like what you were just saying about the veterans and the troops. Like I'm not for all these wars. Like no, we we had a very peaceful couple years a couple years ago and that's what i was wanting more of but obviously right now it's a whole lot of stuff shit it seems like they're trying to go to war with my state the republic of texas (laughs) but but that's neither here nor there um but listen bro i i i I, uh i enjoyed you know uh, you know talking with you about certain issues are not easy to talk about yeah but uh you know now, man, uh, uh, moving forward, 
what, what, what you know, obviously in the comedy, you, you've decided, like, comedy is your thing, right? I love it's, it. Did you, did you did, it. is it, is comedy like, okay, I'm, uh, I'm 100% driven to be the best stand-up I can be? Is that, is that where I you're mean, at right now, bro? I, I appreciate it so much. Um, and this year, you know, it's 2024, new material, new tour. Nice. I, I got to dig deep. What's the name of your tour? You have a tour? Uh, you have yeah. a name of it? What yeah. is it, bro? Are, are we still friends? Oh, yeah. that's a great... <laughs> that's a great... Question mark. That's a you great know, fucking title, well, bro. Well, look, look, dude. That's so, a great after after what happened. Yeah, what the are fuck? we still that, friends? Nice. And you know what? Tonight was the first night of the tour. That's why I just came in. I came in hot. I came in just the energy, bro. Bray Improv, y'all were amazing. And we ended the show... You know, we did the curtain call, brought everybody up, and we played the Golden Girls theme. That thank you for oh, being a friend. friend. Yeah, nice. and everyone's just got their cameras out, and oh. it's just like, hey, we don't have to agree on everything, but we still have a good time and laugh, bro. Have some drinks and kick it. Right, right. That's it. No, no bro. So, man, that's by the way, a great, great, great title, man. Uh, My buddy but, Giovanni came up with that. Well, hey, props, props to you, bro. Um, what up? Uh, you know. Okay, we, I know who inf influenced you in rap, but who comedy. influenced you in comedy, bro? Uh, Eddie Murphy. Oh, yeah. Um, Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Um, I, I love Cat Williams. I love Martin Lawrence. Um, I watched a lot of Comic View in college, BET Comic View. As a kid, I, I saw a lot of, like, Def Comedy Jam, like, just seeing, like, Chris Tucker and Bernie Mac and all these people. Uh, obviously, like, Get Locals would come on TV and... You know, shout out to Juan Villarreal in Houston, who was like a, a veteran from the Houston scene yeah. and uh, opened up so many doors. Shout out to Rick Gutierrez from San Antonio, who whipped me into shape. And he took me from that little host role and was like, yeah. he gave me the he gave me the coach look. Yeah. And, and he was like my coach for, for a time period where he he beat bad habits out of me. He's like. He, I get on stage, he's like, yeah, 37 cuss words. I'm like, no. I was like, Rick, there's no way. What do you mean? I was up there. You can't tell me. He's like, I got the footage if you want. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching after 17 F words and S bombs and everything. I'm like, oh, damn, you're right. I'm only 10 minutes in. This is ridiculous. So, uh, but anyway, influences. So, so who's your coaches? You, you know, your coach is Rick Gutierrez. Yeah, yeah Rick Gutierrez uh, whipped me in the shape. Uh, uh, yeah, no, no. He, he pushed me in the deep end at the Miami Improv. He said, tonight, you're going to end convincingly. You're going to headline, and you're doing 45 minutes, and all these other cats you got that you were, like, bringing up and shit and mm -hmm. playing the baton, they're going on first, and we're doing a traditional lineup. You're hosting, you're featuring, he's headlining. Me in the lobby at noon. In Miami? Yeah. Miami's not an easy gig, but <laughs> I've always no. told <laughs> I've always told there listen, bro, I, I I I've been working Miami for twenty five years, bro. And and I, I and you know, I, I have mad love for Miami because you gotta understand I started at the black clubs here in South Central. Nice. So I was ready for them, bro. Yeah. I was like, all right, you know, bring it on, you know, I don't give a fuck. After you do South Central, Crenshaw on forty third ready. Comedy Act Theater, bro. Miami fucking bring it. So, but I have seen Miami fucking chew and spit motherfuckers out, bro. You know, and fucking lips. Yeah, <laughs> don't bring up lips, bro. Lips had one bad set. They were thick, dude. Right, yeah, but for, for the record, it wasn't his fault. In the in the middle of a, you know, you know, yeah, DJ uh, DJ Vasquez. Yeah. Uh, the the fire alarm went off fire and it didn't stop off. for like twenty minutes, oh, bro. Wow. Like yeah. it just it's kept upset. going, yeah. And, yeah. And oh, it was just no. like no one knew what the fuck to do. Ouch. And he just had to stand up there oh. and try to spit jokes. And then wow. what, and then no no no. Uh, my dad comes out. <laughs> he comes out out of the door right on stage in the middle of the set. He's like, all right, bro, we're gonna stop the show. And so he stopped the show and we just Miami, went, yeah, Miami, we, Miami, Miami yeah, uh, improv. And we we stayed in the. In the green room for like another ten minutes, and then he came out and he's like, "All right, let's try it again." Reset. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah they were already tired. They were drinking. The Miami people drink, bro. Yeah, I love so, Miami. So yeah, no, 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 bro. But 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 yeah, you did that in Miami. That's fucking kudos to you, bro. Um, and listen, brother, I I I, uh, I like to make this this, this podcast. Uh, uh, I'm not here to ambush anybody. I, I'm not here to fucking. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not want to shock anybody. I, I always like having regular conversations. I always drink a beer, 
sip on a shot, smoke a cigar, and I just want to make people feel at ease, you know? That's the vibe I want. Absolutely. Right? And, and if people people like my podcast, they don't like the podcast, they don't like the way I do it, I, I really don't give a fuck, because this, <laughs> this is for me first, you Fucking know? Fucking right. And, uh, and, and, uh, and I enjoy that my guests enjoy themselves, and I, I hope you had a good time oh, there, dude, bro. Episode six, <laughs> it's an honor. Dude, I love you to death. No, no, no. Thank mad, you. mad love, bro. Love mad love, bro. Th- thank you. Sure. Thank you for being here. Anything, anything you want to plug, man? You want to plug your Instagram? Uh, or your, are we still friends? Else? Tour. Okay. I'm going everywhere. Just hit the website, chingobling.com. I've got all kind of merch and stuff on there. But, but more than anything, thank you guys for tuning in. And, uh, what's, and your, what's your Instagram, bro? What's your IG? Uh, IG is a real chingobling. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hey, and for all my people. Um, this is gonna. Uh, I'm gonna see you guys on on when, when's, uh, Wednesday, uh, Valentine's Day, right? Uh, yeah, is it Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday, Wednesday Valentine's Day. Day. Valentine's Day. At, um, yeah. Nice, nice. Chicago. Chicago when? On the 17th. On the 17th. Do you know the name of the place, bro? Uh, Avondale Music Hall. There you go. When, Man, when you, got, you, got, you got the camera on you, Mule? <laughs> Now it is. <laughs> now it is. Put the camera on you, dude. Let them know where I'm going. I'm shy. Let them know where I'm going to be at. So, uh, February 17th, Chicago, Avondale Music Hall. Then uh, the 23rd to the 25th, he's going to be in Tempe, Arizona at the Improv. Then 29th through March 2nd, he's going to be in Las Vegas at the Laugh Factory, the Tropicana. One of the last shows at one the Tropicana before, shows, yeah. before yeah. it shuts and, down. And by the way, let them know it's only the 7 o'clock show, bro. Because that's the only shows I'm doing. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. people. Yeah. Right. Okay. When is Houston? Houston's uh, Saturday, this, but this is going to air oh, next after. week. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm not, yeah, we're doing well there, by the way. With, Man. Uh, yeah. yeah I, at the House of Blues. Awesome. Uh, so let me let's, let's do some editing, bro. Work some editing, all right? I'm going to do a recap real quick, like we're picking it up from here. Okay, Mijo? So check this out, man, real quick. I got some dates coming up. Mijo, tell them the dates, man, where we're going to be, bro. To put the camera on you, bro. Don't be shy. All right, all right. Yeah. So it's going to be uh, uh, Valentine's Day, Wednesday. He's going to be at Stevens Takehouse in, where is it at? Commerce? In, in Casita Commerce. Casita Commerce, Commerce in L.A. And then... And then he's gonna be at the Chicago, Chicago, Illinois, at the Avondale Music Hall. Then Tempe, Arizona, the 23rd to the 25th. Then Las Vegas at the Laugh Factory, uh, March, uh, the February 29th through March 2nd. There you go. Bro. That was very smooth. <laughs> you get on me, bro. <laughs> you guys, thank you for hanging out again, man. Mad love. I want to. I want to thank Tingle Bling, badass guest, man. Thank you for thank hanging you, out, my thank bro. You, thank you. I'm gonna thank uh, 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 somebody is, he, he's, that's off camera, but it's uh, just big, big, big help, man. John Benitez, man, I always love you, and uh, this man right here, Fabian. All right, Fabian Barcena, man. We have the last, same last name. That's a trip. Anyways, uh, <laughs> all right, everybody, mad love, man. Thank you. <laughs>